If you've been keeping up on Google News, you would know this week had an interesting development with Gemini Live as the AI-powered voice assistant is now available to all users. For those not caught up to speed, Gemini Live was a new feature released alongside the Pixel 9 series in mid-August for Gemini Advanced subscribers, but now, as of September 12th, it's beginning to roll out for everyone. So to celebrate the widespread availability, let's do a quick deep dive into everything you need to know about Gemini Live, show you how it works, and how to get the most out of it. And hey, if you find these deep dives helpful, consider subscribing to the channel as we have a lot more coming your way. In a nutshell, Gemini Live is a voice-activated AI-powered assistant designed for natural back-and-forth conversations, kind of like how you would with an actual real-life assistant. You can give it casual commands, ask it to do research on your behalf regarding certain topics, or my favorite is having Gemini Live break down a complex thought that I'm curious about in a quick, low-stakes environment. There are a few main features that you should know about when it comes to Gemini Live. One of the biggest additions is the ability to interrupt in mid-sentence, which is very very helpful if there's a misunderstanding that needs to be redirected. Another major feature is the wide variety of natural sounding voices. Personally, I love my girl Vega as it sounds friendly and casual and low-key seems kind of excited to be a voice assistant, but there are nine others to choose from with a variety of different tones to suit your preferences. And the final major feature you should keep in mind is the full transcript you get at the end of each interaction. Most of the time you might not need it, but I found it very useful for reviewing the chat at a later time, or more importantly, use that Google search option to double check the results for accuracy. I think use cases are a big talking point when it comes to these AI assistants, and trust me, I see the comments all the time saying, what should I use this for, or what's the point? Those are fair, but over the course of the past month, I've settled into a few use cases that I found to be super helpful. One is brainstorming or idea generation. Sometimes that's in the form of finding interesting angles to write about, getting a fresh perspective on my writing, finding new video ideas, Ideas, or on a personal level, getting ideas for self-care slash relaxation activities. The second use case I find myself using often is for information gathering, whether I'm looking for interesting locations near me, like trails, coffee shops, museums, etc. And the best part is, Gemini typically probes for information, asking if you want to do something indoors or outdoors, alone or with friends, what's your budget, and much more, which really helps me find exactly what I'm looking for. And the third major use case is getting a ton of context or insight on a certain topic before I delve too deeply, like investing, language learning, travel plans, fitness, or maybe gain insight as to why someone would do or say something that I might not have understood. And the fourth use case that I'll just throw in here, I'd say the convenience of being hands-free while also being very conversational helps me whenever my hands are full. I use Gemini Live a lot while driving actually, which do at your own risk by the way, but I found I could get the answers I needed while keeping both hands on the wheel and not having to fidget around with anything. I also use it a lot while cooking, cleaning, going on walks, or simply doing the dishes since I get that same natural dialogue without having to actually interact with my device, which has been a huge selling point for me personally. So, as a whole, that's the main pieces of Gemini Live you need to know about, but let me give you a few tips to maximize your usage if you plan to try it for yourself. For those that didn't know, Gemini Live does work when the app is in the background, so you can keep the conversation going while accessing other apps if need be. And on top of that, I found during my time with Gemini Live, or just Gemini in general, the more specific your prompt is, the better the result. If you ever delved into coding before, you might be familiar with the if this, then do that kind of inquiry, and Gemini works best in that context. So often I give it a multi-stage request, like show me food options within two miles with outdoor seating that's relatively affordable, maybe under $30 a plate as an example, which typically gets me going in the right direction. And my last piece of advice would be to use the Google search double check results feature, especially if the topic at hand is important or if you simply need to be credible with the information you're giving out. A common complaint I see is how AI bots in general hallucinate, which is true, and and like I said, if you need to be confident in the information you're receiving because it's for something serious versus a low stakes conversation starter perhaps, that Google it feature has saved me a ton of time and a ton of stress. Now, while I will say I've enjoyed my time with Gemini Live, it's not perfect and there are some issues I've bumped into. One in particular was an issue where Gemini would sometimes abruptly stop responding mid-sentence. I'm not sure why, maybe it's picking up a background noise or maybe it's a reoccurring bug, but it does require you to reinitiate 
initiate your prompt, which can be annoying, especially if you're in the middle of a productive conversation. Occasionally, Gemini Live does try to answer the prompt before I finish speaking as well. Not as often, but if I took a moment to pause, it would immediately jump in and start responding, so maybe that's a me problem. Another issue, like other AI initiatives, Gemini Live can sometimes provide inaccurate information or misunderstand my requests. This also doesn't happen as often, but between the ability to interrupt in mid-sentence or use the Google it feature, I don't typically have much of a problem here. If you're deeply integrated with Google services though, you might be disappointed here, as Gemini Live can access extensions like Google Keep, Calendar, YouTube Music, or Gmail, and it also cannot control device settings, although we are told this will be coming in the future at some point. We also do not have support for Gemini Gems, which is the pre-made personas that allow the AI to think they're a teacher or a coach, where it gives answers from that perspective. Hopefully that comes sometime in the future. And a personal critique, at least during my month of usage, there is currently no one tap access to Gemini Live. Right now, you can only access it by summoning the assistant, then hitting the live icon, but I wish I had the ability to immediately access it by holding down the power button, let's say. As for the future of Gemini Live, I'd say things do look good, at least from what we know is on the way. Google did say the service would have support for more language options, it will have support for iOS, and have deeper integration with Google services, so you'll be able to add ingredients to a Google Keep shopping list, create a playlist for you in YouTube Music, add events to your calendar, and should get phone utility access to operate the flashlight, control media playback, set alarms, and turn on Wi-Fi, plus many more, so that should resolve a big issue there. Not to mention, we have multimodal capabilities in development that will allow Gemini Live to see via video and discuss the environment around you, basically like we saw with Project Astra at Google I.O. And while not confirmed in any way, rumor has it Samsung and Google might be working on a pair of smart glasses, which hopefully and most logically should be running Gemini Live with video as well, something I'd be first in line for if that does come to fruition. At the end of the day, Gemini Live is a huge leap forward when it comes to conversational AI, and especially now that it's free, I do encourage you to try it out just to see what sticks out to you. I've been using Gemini on a daily basis since launch, so it felt more like a natural extension of the program to me, but if you haven't used it in a while, it might be a bit of a learning curve, so I hope those tips and examples I gave you earlier helped you get started. Test it out, try some interesting prompts, and let us know in the comments what your experience has been like so far. Tell us how you use Gemini Live, do you find it actually helpful, and what features are missing that would make you actually use or maybe invest in the service. Let's chat in the comment section as myself and the Android community would love to hear what you're thinking. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here. But before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. And don't forget to grab the new Mars themed wallpaper pack for September. For those that want to grab these wallpapers for yourself, hit the join button to learn more and be part of our community. This has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.